Thank you for joining me today. I would like to give you an update on the economic outlook and markets. My family and friends love to tell me that I'm a bad driver on the roads. Besser and cars don't mix, I'm told. However, I do love to use car analogies when talking about the economy because I think it gives us a good snapshot of where the economy is at. When I think about Australian economic growth, it is travelling at a pace that is akin to being in gear three. That is, it is not sputtering, but it is also not travelling at the sweet spot. In other words, economic growth is travelling below potential. We expect that that will continue to be the case over the next 12 to 18 months. The recent cyclone has hit and our thoughts are with those that are affected. There will likely be some economic impact from the cyclone, but it is too early to assess how much of one. There's likely to be some effect on prices, but that effect will be temporary and usually the RBA does look through temporary effects. In terms of inflation, it is running under the Reserve Bank's 2-3% per annum target ban. It has been doing so for some time and underlying inflation is unlikely to return to the middle part of the band anytime soon. Ordinarily, when growth is running below potential and inflation is running under the target band, that would spell another rate cut from the Reserve Bank. But the Reserve Bank faces a difficult juggling act. It needs to weigh up the potential benefits to growth and inflation from cutting the rate, rate cut with the potential risks to household balance sheets. The recent reacceleration in house prices in Sydney and Melbourne that are on the radar underscore these risks to household balance sheets and financial stability. It means the hurdle for a rate cut is high. So we think the Reserve Bank is likely to sit on the sidelines and leave the cash rate alone this year and next year. That is the cash rate. But businesses do not borrow at cash. Indeed, fixed business term rates are priced off the swap yield curve. Swap rates sit above government bond rates. Swap yields in Australia have moved a long way since they bottomed in August of last year. Why, might you ask, have two-year through to ten-year swap rates moved so much higher when the RBA is set to sit on its hands? Well, the answer lies with the US, US economic activity and US inflation expectations. The US economic recovery is continuing and inflationary pressures are expected to build. It is reflected in the US unemployment rate, which has dropped under 5% and is widely considered to be at or near full employment. That has spurred the Federal Reserve into action. The US Federal Reserve recently raised the federal funds target rate for the third time in this cycle. Expectations that the US Federal Reserve will continue to raise rates, combined with underlying strength in the US economy, is pushing US bond and swap rates higher. US bond and swap rates are dragging our bond and swap rate ho rates higher, although not by as much because our domestic story is different. The Federal Reserve has indicated that they are likely to raise rates a further two times this year. That should maintain upward pressure on US bond and swap rates and maintain the upward pressure on our own swap rates and business fixed term rates. Of course, while the trend should generally be higher for swap rates, there could be a whole lot of volatility to come. Uncertainty abounds, yet asset markets have shown very little volatility. That could be the calm before the storm. The main source of uncertainty to global financial markets stems from politics, especially US politics. There are no prizes for guessing why I am calling 2017 the year of political risks. US President Trump is at the core of this uncertainty, but there are also key elections in Germany, France, the Netherlands, and then there's also the 19th Party Congress in China in November. Trump's policies lack a lot of detail. This lack of detail is feeding uncertainty among economists. Uncertainty is also stemming from the mixed messages that Trump is delivering and the fact that his policies will need to pass through Congress. Whilst economists have pulled out the worry beads, those trading billions of dollars on trading floors around the world have not. We can measure uncertainty by measuring volatility. Market measures of volatility are low. 
But the big risk is that the uncertainty that economists feel and see will spill over into financial markets. Take the Australian dollar, a very liquid currency and one that is usually very volatile. Over the 10 years to 2016, the Australian dollar traded a 20 US cent range on average. This year, it has traded less than a 6 US cent range and for 2016, it traded just under a US 10 cent range. These recent ranges are incredibly narrow when you consider how wide the Australian dollar normally trades at. It's unusual for the Australian dollar to show so little volatility. With all of the political risks abounding and not to mention the economic risks, there is a real risk that volatility returns to financial markets this year. If that is the case, we can expect share prices, bond prices and currencies to swing about a whole lot more this year.